Well, I'm Bob Walker from Two Rivers, and I got to think, and here I was a member since <coughs> 1999, and I don't think I missed a meeting, an annual meeting, so it's always fun to come here and bring stuff for the auction and buy stuff that you donated two years ago and then <laughs> sell it, give it back two years later, so that's what I do. But anyway, I, I've, in, 19, in 2003, the meeting was in Two Rivers, the annual meeting, and I did a program at that time on the woodland, of the wood industry, woodworking industry in Two Rivers, and one of the facets of that was the tannery. So I kind of resurrected that, and uh, I'm going to do it again today. And uh, in researching something new, I found out that Bob Fay, who was former president of the Manitowoc County Historical Society, did a, a new, did a lot of new digging and found many more, much more information. And uh, there's a display that he made, a really neat thing out at the Point Beach State Forest on the, the headquarters building where you go in there, you, can, you don't have to be a, you don't even need a, a park sticker to get in, you can go and just ask to see it. And it's really nice. But his work was on, my work is on the uh, Wisconsin Leather Company. His is on that and the Fister and Vogel, which is still a big tannery down in Milwaukee, I believe. They're still in operation. But they were in two creeks, and the one I'm going to talk about was in two rivers. This is the two rivers. That was the tannery there. About The city is here, and that's about two miles up the river. Then they owned a lot of this. This is now mostly Point Beach, Point Beach State Forest. And then they had much more land up here. And the Fister and Vogel was all up here around two, two creeks, and two creeks had a big landing, which... I find out burned in the late 1800s, but uh, I'll go back to my script here. In 1850, oh, in 1850, the population of Two Rivers was 924, and I think it was not even, a, it might have been a village of Two Rivers, but it just said the population of Two Rivers was 924. But in 1851, Cyril Whitcomb, Rufus Allen, and George Allen come to Two Rivers and they started the tannery for the Wisconsin Leather Company and they were headquartered in Milwaukee but they bought 1,200 acres for 50 cents an acre and they, they bought hemlock. They needed hemlock. The hemlock bark, they mill it, grind it up and put it in a big vats and tannic acid comes, becomes from that and uh, that's what they, they used and needed in tanning. So they, when they started building their the buildings there, they, put, they found a nice flat spot on the river and the Thetes who live not far from there know what I'm talking about and it, it must have flooded at times too but you'll see a, the picture here. The wood originally was cut right from the woods there, the, the timbers, the lumber was brought up the river from wherever the sawmills, there was a couple sawmills in two rivers already in around 1850 and the bricks were brought in from Milwaukee so I don't know how long it took them to build it but they got their employees from Madison County, New York, Sezonia, and a large, that they were from another tannery there. They must have enticed them to come to Wisconsin. But they bought 1,200 acres from the government, and it was 50 cents an acre, which, and that was within, oh, let me go back to it. That was all this around here. And then in later years, I think they had to get get this because they were running out so and that but that 1200 acres actually would be 640 acres to a section that wouldn't have been a whole lot but they uh, the hides were sh shipped up by boat during the summer and it, it from Chicago and Milwaukee stockyards and in the winter they went by wagon and it was a five-day round trip to take a wagon load of uh, hides up and finish leather back down and it was just a continuous thing and that must have been a real fun trip to go to, to Milwaukee every couple of days, every couple of weeks. Um, the leather was a heavy type used mostly for its harnesses and shoe soles and the machinery and the original plant came from Milwaukee and had an 80 horsepower steam engine. A hundred men were employed there. The main building was 
there's a tannery. There, the main building was 30, 315 by 50 feet, and they processed 60,000 hides a year. And the tannery used 7,000 tons of hemlock bark in a year. And as the supply dwindled out of their own land, it became a cottage industry for the farmers and the woodsmen around there because they were clearing land anyway. So they would bring in the, the, uh, the bark. And I guess from tanning, uh, from peeling popple when I was a kid, probably in mid June and July was the time of year when you could get the bark loose enough to come off the tree. So but they said, said in my research, the farmers were received from five to ten dollars a cord. That seemed like an awful lot of money them days. But, uh, and they hauled it as far away as 15 miles. So it's, that was pretty good pay if it would have been scrap for the farmers. But a little village sprang up around the tannery. We won't hear all, uh, there's a couple of neat things I, I think are neat. I don't know, you might not. But there's a, there was a bridge across here. But here's the outhouse right over the water there. <laughs> so <laughs> there's no line of people going there. But it's, and it was just a big, and then I've got, a, you're going to see a picture I think it's taken under these windows here of the workers. And there's only two pictures I've ever seen, and I have both of them of the tannery. So, but the, the workers are, and they had their little scraper tools there. This guy's got two of them. He's got one. The guy took his hat off for the picture. And they were, they were a rugged looking bunch, and that had to be a, a really distasteful job, I would think, working in a tannery. but. There's probably worse jobs. Back to when the, when the tides came in on the ship, they would see the ship coming from some vantage point in town, and they would go down to the tavern and ply the, some of the local people with a little encouragement to go down and unload the ship. Mr. Whitcomb built a village there for the, for the workers. There were seven large houses for the married workers along with a boarding house for 40 men. They built a school next to one of the buildings for the kids, and that was either not, not big enough, so they uh, built another school, which is still standing now, the Tannery School, and that closed in 1961, and I talked to some people who went to school there. I know quite a few people who went to school there. So. And there is a cemetery, and I didn't get any pictures of it, but it, that cemetery is called, in, a, in an 1872 or 78 plat book I have, it's called the Lutheran Cemetery, and then it now is the Town of Two River Cemetery, and it's still an active cemetery. There's a couple of open spots in there in case anybody wants to. It's well maintained now. That my, I live in the Town of Two Rivers, and they pay the, the uh, caretaker $500 a year to keep it up, and it looks nice, and it's, it's behind Geimer's Farm, if you know, right down the road again from you. The second tannery was built in... Well, just south of the first one, and then one plant, the first one was torn down, and the second plant operated until 1887 when the supply of bark was exhausted and they closed the plant. But uh, a few more. This is a 18, I believe, 1887 plant book, and you can't see much on there, but they blew it up here. This is where the where the, they had a little village there, and that's right about there. That's where Jerry and Kay Thede live. So that's Tannery Road now that goes by there. It got the name and goes way out in the country. And uh, Tannery School was at the corner of the section 25 and 24, so that was up in here someplace. The, uh, there's no, no remnants of any buildings there. But here's where the tannery was, and after it closed, uh, in talking to the people, that, the Geimers that own the land now, they said for years, back in the 60s or maybe 70s, there was this mountain or, or like a mine of leftover bark, hemlock bark, and the people hauled that all away, or maybe Geimers sold it for uh, mulch. It was pretty well preserved. So the second tannery was built. In 1887, the supply of bark ran out, so they closed it. The operation was moved to Milwaukee, and the remaining building was destroyed by fire in 1891. Uh, Two Rivers had a couple more tanneries. Mr. Carl Winkelmeyer, Winkle Miller, 
made one in 1856 in Two Rivers by, by the Washington Street Bridge. That closed in 1888. In 1870, H. Lohman and the company started one just on land just north of what became the Eggers Veneer Company. And the Lohman plant tannery closed in 1887. And from what was in 1851 to an apparent inexhaustible supply of hemlock bark was used up in 36 years. And I think one of the reasons that this, this is the Goodrich Docks, and this was, that's the Hamilton smokestack back there probably. There's a St. Luke's Church and the 17th Street Bridge. But there was no railroad in, in, to Two Rivers, maybe until 1872 or thereabouts. And I find no, no mention of anybody ever hauling any hides in or finished lead products out by a railroad. And I would think, though, the good, this was the Goodrich docks, and they had daily service to the whole east side of, would be the west side of Lake Michigan. So that's uh, kind of where it went. And I got my information of, from Art Lohman, early days of Two Rivers, and Evan Gagne in the Shota, Two Rivers history, and Hubert Wentorf, there were his pictures, and Bob Fay from the Historical Society of Manitowoc County. So, I, and that's kind of my program. It's uh, any questions or comments? Yes, but the hemlock would have to bend. These big trees were at least three foot on a stump. I don't know how the people, when they cut them down, they must have just took the bark off and left the trees rot, left them lay there to rot. The bark. You peel the bark just like with a big tool. I should have brought my peeling tools along. What do they use the bark for? They ground, ground it up and put it in the big vats and made a solution with that. And they soaked the hides in there for a period of time. And that either did, it, it made to preserve the leather, I guess is what it did. But then we go back to the, the uh, if I can go back here a couple. That was the tannery, and the water came in up there, and the, the, all the sludge and everything else went right down the East Twin River. So, so when that hemlock was uh, boiling, that's yeah. when it smelled? Oh, I have no idea. The hemlock probably smelled like oh, the, hides. the hides. Yeah, that was, on, that was done with, with heat, too. It didn't just so, it, in a, a period of time, and there was some very, just when you go home, Google leather tanning, and you'll see what the people had a had to put up with. Well, but see, the big packing plants in Chicago and Milwaukee, that's where the, the hides all came from. Yep. And that's why Fister and Vogel was in Milwaukee and is still there. I don't know if there are any packing plants left in Milwaukee or not. And the, the bark was peeled in probably if you had a tree this big, you might have made four pieces out of that. And you laid them down flat and dried them out. You had to keep them dry so you put you would probably stand it on edge and then make a little teepee over it with more bark from the pictures I've seen. Well, that's about what I have, and I'm only halfway done. Look at that. Thank you, Bob. I've got a